गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग होप एवरी वन इज गुड यस नाउ हाउ इज योर वर्क टू यू सर आई एम गुड 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 बट फीलिंग लिट इज स्लीपी ये स्टडी आई कुड नॉट स्लीप ऑन टाइम आई गोट अपने I felt like I should not go today. Sometimes we'll feel like same, right? But I thought no, I have to complete this on time. So that's the reason. Anyways, uh, I hope you guys are completing the homework, right? Yesterday the homework was for uh, email, right? Uh, yes. Email spoofing. I have given the homework, right? Yes, so, sir. How we can avoid uh, email spoofing using. SPF record, mm-hmm. DKIM, DMARC, right? Multiple authentication mechanism for you know verifying uh, uh, the spoofed email, right? If anybody send an email from your email ID, your domain, that is called as email spoofing, right? <clears throat> so uh, um, on the actual topic, if you talk about, uh, we t- we were talking about the proxy. Yes or no? You understand proxy URL filtering, content filtering, right? Different name, but same thing, right? Proxy. That means once you access, you know, uh, proxy may use URL filtering, right? Means to regulate your internet access, right? Means what people, what people, what kind of role we have? Uh, I mean, different people are having, and what kind of website they should be able to access, right? They should not be ex- able to access unnecessarily sites, right? Otherwise, they will do the time pass, eating the bandwidth. Yes or no? Watching the movies on YouTube or any video sites unnecessarily. That means disadvantages. They will be eating the bandwidth unnecessarily. You take the bandwidth. Also, they will not be working. If they will not be able to access site. They will be working. Yes or no? They will be spending nine hours. So we can regulate the internet access using the proxy. Second thing, malicious website, malware, phishing, spam category of the website will not be accessible. To anyone, right? So we can safeguard. We can save our network. Darshan, you are not in mute. Guys, if anybody is not in mute, unless you know, I will come. I will have to remove you. This is the warning. So what I am saying is, uh, uh, here, who is Avinash? Let me remo- let let me remove him. So uh, unnecessarily website, right? I mean, a piece of website will not be accessible. That means we can save our network from you know phishing website, malware website, and all, right? As well as we can regulate our internet access. What our people can access, we can create the separate, different, different accessible uh, internet access group, right? Because as soon as any website comes live, proxy vendor from whom you have bought this proxy device, right, does the research and check it out. That particular website belongs to which category? right falls under which category so uh, particular uh, people who has what level of access what kind of category of site they are having access based on that they will be able to access right people does not have access to the particular website they will get the block page right saying that your organization has chosen to block this page for you this website for you right you want that it is an error and should have access to the website kindly contact get in mind that kind of block page they will be having so we call as proxy we this week this device we call as proxy why because it uh, when you are when you are you access the internet right your ip does not go directly to the internet means your connection directly do not go to the internet instead your uh, connection will go to the proxy proxy will initiate a new connection we have of you and go to the internet got in mind that is the reason we call as proxy in the internet proxy ip will go to the internet not your ip right and if man in the middle somewhere man in the middle track the connection communication and attack back he will not be knowing the actual ip he will knowing the proxy ip and proxy do not accept any inbound connection proxy only when you access the site will go to the internet and get the communication back right but if anybody is targeting towards proxy ip it will always deny the connection get even that is the good thing that it's securing a network it's not accepting any inbound traffic right so man in the middle who is tracking your and try to hijack hijack the session right it will be difficult for him because the outbound inbound connection it will not be allowing get in mind <clears throat> so uh, that is the work of proxy apart from that proxy also record 
uh, the activity right you understand that each and every digital device your network device security device servers application databases right these all are digital device so whatever activities are happening right on those devices will be recording in the form of logs means event yes or no so proxy also records whenever you access the internet access the website it will go through a proxy proxy will record also right which user from which source ip access what website what time how much you downloaded how much you uploaded which category the website belongs to right website complete url facebook.com slash like this right so uh, if you're working in a company for example you're not working you're working on night shift but your manager does not know what you are doing on a daily basis right he can request the log from security team saying that can you send me one week log for this particular guy i want to see what he's doing in the internet Yes or no? So we can see all your internet access report, what exactly you are doing over the internet, right? So don't be over smart. Everything is being monitored. Yes or no? What website you are accessing, what you are downloading, what you are uploading, right? Accessing social media, YouTube, Vimeo.com. Everything is being recorded in the proxy. Anytime your manager can ask for the logs. Get it, man? This all things have been recorded so we can see. How much you downloaded, uploaded everything using the proxy solution, right? So you understand? Zscaler is also the proxy. Ah, uh, what? Zscaler is also a proxy. That multiple vendors are having. Well, Zscaler is mostly famous for load balancer, right? However, this Zscaler is a vendor means developer, right? They are having multiple product. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, so you understand? Uh, we talk about a firewall. All the con traffic. Is going through firewall, coming and going through firewall. Email get web only web application traffic, only to secure the web applications, right? While your email gateway to secure the email traffic means traffic on port number twenty five will be going through email gateway, right? Proxy to secure your users from malicious website as well as to regulate the internet access. Most of the time, proxy will come trigger for port number eight, eighty and eighty and or for the most of the time however normal other application traffic also other portal traffic also can be allowed disallow can be regulated by proxy but most of the time you will see web access means atn443 right mostly atn443 traffic will allow through proxy you understand now you have system right who has internet access like email access pro, uh, website access we can secure because there are three ways only there are three ways for any computer to get infected one is through email malicious email one is through website you access malicious website and third is third one USB. is usb USB. usb drive that is the reason see we have this control right because all emails and uh, you know website access you do through network only uh, you, your office exit internet exit is going but usb anybody can insert that's the reason 99.9 percent .9 companies will disable the usb access on your system right usb access means usb drive access you can plug in your uh, microphone and all using usb port but usb storage drive access will be disabled means you can't insert usb drive that means uh, storage pen drive and all get what i mean so that in not so we uh, we have closed all this loopholes right weak holes so that uh, uh, you know uh, this one will not come inside uh, the network so this is what about the proxy why we are discussing about these devices our work is a sock right most of the time we will work in the sim to monitor the real time why we are talking about all this network device like router switches firewall your proxy email gateway why we are talking about because these we are going to get the locks to the full game of locks in the sock the full game is of locks lock means records right event yes or no because these all the, as of now we understand right these all devices work on based on signature only for example new website has been launched it's actually malware website but proxy vendor has not categorized it yet as a malicious website and resulting those website will be accessible for anyone everyone any website which have been not been categorized by the vendor as of now newly launched not been reviewed by the vendor for example broker proxy apart not been reviewed will be accessible for everyone in that case, there might be possible that somebody access and malware get downloaded, or any website sometime miscategorized also. It's a phishing website, malicious website, but vendor has categorized a technology website. If you access something has been downloaded, yes or no? Understand? Email gateway does not have the 30 feet ACL information. Email has been delivered. 
firewall does not have acl communication has been allowed right so we understand these all the devices that so far we understand work based on the signature we predefine information predefined information that we define yes or no but there are chances sometime no signature successfully compromise right so so how from which ip connection has came from which email id email has been uh, came where it has been delivered what user has what website right personally so how many user have access the website right all this information we can check based on the logs right so all these devices will be sending the logs to the sim that is the reason i explain about all these devices because without having understanding of these devices you cannot work on the soc otherwise you can work but you will not have your concept clear why you are doing so you just follow the copy paste job but your fund foundation will not be clear why we are doing what should i look at many of the people directly work on the soc they do not have understanding of these devices all basics and they end up doing copy paste job donkey job they do not know why they are doing just following the document okay if this alert trigger okay then i have to check last 24 hours logs okay then i have checked source ip then i have how many logs are there okay then i have to download the logs and create the case and they do not know why i am creating this case why this is an incident what kind of analysis i have to do getting me they do not understand that because their foundation is not clear right if foundation is not strong building will not be strong right getting me so that's very important to have understanding basic understanding of all those devices if you have basic understanding you understand now right proxy email uh, proxy is for web traffic means what user have access website username will be captured source i will be captured url will be captured right uh, uh, category of the website will be captured proxy has blocked that website or allowed that will be captured yes or no similarly firewall source ip destination ip source port destination port device action byte in byte out, how much you have downloaded how much uploaded right these all information will be captured on the proxy firewall you understand where we have the firewall in the network where we have proxy in the network what purpose you are using proxy what purpose you are using web what purpose you are using email gateway yes or no if you get the logs now in the same you will understand right that's the objective of explaining this basic networking and security devices what router does where we deploy the router for what purpose why we are not deploying switch instead right you understand <clears throat> so now uh, <clears throat> next device that we have now there is a possibility see in cyber security we always believe on multi layer of security multi layer security in physical security also you believe multi layer of security in gate then do then bedroom then locker right in your home also office also you believe on multi layer of security because if 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 some theft happen so thieves comes inside if you have multiple doors maybe uh, maybe in the locker he will not be able to break the lock right similarly here also <clears throat> in the digital world this is switch okay this is firewall now there is a possibility for example this is email gateway okay or proxy or email gate whatever there is a possibility right attacker has uh, you know uh, initiated the mail with uh, a new ip address which is not blocked in the firewall right but it's having malicious attachment malicious attachment right so ip was not blacklisted your uh, firewall will allow the traffic you have email gateway in email gateway also the domain name or email id was not blacklisted not as a part of acl right resulting email gateway will not understand email contain the phishing attachment or this is a phishing email right resulting email gateway may also allow may also allow right that email and resulting email will get successful delivered yes or no guys who is not in mute two people are not in mute sir sir, sir hello when i am explaining you you should not interrupt in between i'll take the pause then you can ask the question sir there is some technical problem i i, I can't view your classes but you can view right 
बट सर म्यूट 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 करने पर ही मैं देख रहा हूँ सर हाँ क्या मैं मैं अनम्यूट करने पर क्लासेस नहीं दिख रही मुझे टू टू लास्ट क्लासेस म्यूट करने पर दिख रहा है मुझे क्लासेस दिख रहा है म्यूट ना म्यूट करने से क्या फर्क पड़ता है क्या सर इसलिए मैंने करा आज क्योंकि लास्ट टू क्लासेस में मिस कर चुका हूँ अभी देखो अभी दिख रही है ऐसे म्यूट ना देखने से कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता म्यूट सिर्फ ऑडियो म्यूट होता वीडियो म्यूट नहीं होता सिर्फ ऑडियो म्यूट होता है ठीक है मेक श्योर यू आर एन म्यूट हम्म सो व्हाट आई एम सेइंग आई वाज टेलिंग इन दिस केस देयर देयर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी दैट ईमेल विल गेट डिलीवर्ड रिजल्टिंग सिस्टम विल गेट इंफेक्टेड और यू मे एक्सेस अवर वेबसाइट वेबसाइट इज एक्चुअली फिशिंग वेबसाइट मालवीर वेबसाइट बट your uh, proxy vendor has not categorized yet as resulting you have access to website and something has been downloaded yes or no there is a possibility so we always believe one multi level security somehow email has been delivered or you access something using the web browser right and resulting your system has downloaded the malware right now that means see all these devices are network layer of de network security devices means are the part of network right while packet traveling to the network you have these devices That's why we call it this network security devices. These all are network security devices, right? Now, now malware reached to the end point. Means it has penetrated the network already. Yes or no? It has penetrated the network and reached to the end point. Now we should have some security solution in case this network device fails to detect. Yes or no? We should have some security solution that secure our end point. Yes, so in the company you also sometimes if you are work, already working, right? Sometimes you download something and it captured by the antivirus. Yes, so no? that means your network security got, device got filled. Maybe through email you received, email gateway filled, or some website from which you have downloaded. That means your website is uh, your proxy is filled. That's the reason you have your malware reached to the endpoint. That means so we should have some security solution which which secure the endpoint. That we call endpoint security. Right, an endpoint security is antivirus. Endpoint security solution is and we can call as antivirus. Get it? So now antivirus means once your malware, your malicious file reached to the endpoint, we should have some security solution that we call as antivirus. Understand? So each and every system in the corporate, uh, uh, you will have antivirus installed either systems or server. Understand? Clear this point. So, how antivirus works? So, each and every system that you will have, your antivirus will be installed, right? So that in case your malware reaches to the endpoint, right? Your endpoint means server and system should be secure. So, you will have antivirus, right? So, antivirus works on signature. Signature means again predefined information, right? There are many different information is there. Again, it will have dynamic and static ACL. So, based on signature. For example, you have bought Symantec antivirus, right? So your antivirus client will be taking the update from Symantec cloud, right? That is dynamic list, and anything you can allow or block manually also that is called a static list (ACL), right? Dynamic list will be, you know, your antivirus will be detecting detecting any file as a malware or malicious file based on its signature as well as based on the behavior. Get it? Signature. Is one signature can be hash file also? They understand last time hash file, right? Antivirus team will do the research and check it out which all hash files, uh, hash value the files are malicious files hash values, right? They will be updating it here, and whenever any file is scanned, it will retrieve this hash value and match with the signature. If it is match, then it will come to know what kind of malware it is, right? So antivirus team always will do the research and update the signature here. Apart from the predefined information. Your antivirus can also detect any file as a malicious based on its behavior, behavior analysis, right? If any file trying to copy itself, yes, so or any file once it installs software, it is trying to connect outside. It can be a trojan, yes, so different different uh, you know behavior of the file. Antivirus can understand that its particular file is malicious or what kind of malware it is, right? Based on the, its behavior. Get it? So how antivirus will understand based on the signature or based on the behavior? Antivirus will understand and detect this particular file is malicious. 
what kind of malicious ads trojan crypto mining software or it's a spyware it's a uh, ransomware what kind of it is it may detect that even based on the signature and behavior now how it will come to know right how so what happens is uh, whenever so antivirus done the scanning of the file any file that you have in the system antivirus will scan the file against the signature and behavior get in mind so there are two type of scan one is real time scan another is full system scan one is there are two type of scanning antivirus if you install in a system it can do two type of scanning one is real time scan real time scan and another is full system scan full system because you are going to get the loss from antivirus also right on the sock on the sim it very important to understand how antivirus works so whenever you have antivirus install on all the systems now right so as soon as for example you got an email once you click on the attachment to download during the download process before download process starts get in once you download once you click on the file to download right before downloading process starts right and completes your antivirus will catch and it will start scanning the file for any malicious uh, like malware or any kind of uh, different malware right get in mind it will start scanning and if it is detect detect anything it will take action what action it will take i will tell you right so that is called as real time scanning that means as soon as you download any file that time it will scan right that scanning is called as real time scan You, you plug in the uh, USB. Once you plug in the USB, for example, USB. Anyways, you don't have access to any company. Once you plug in, all the file will get, you know, scanned, right? Once you put, uh, you know, uh, you know, access any website and click on download. Once the download gets started, it will not be completed. Once it gets started, it will start scanning. And if it is found a signature, it will it will take the action. What the couple of different actions I will tell you. Get that point? So. that is called as a real time scan right so you understand whatever antivirus activity extend it takes whatever activity does it records right okay this file has been downloaded this is the path of the file this is the file name on this particular system this user has logged in and file has been scanned it's been deleted is clean quarantine left on there are multiple options right all logs will get generated get it and this is the hash value of particular file this is the file name get it so this all devices will generate all the activity so that we can get to know what activity is happening what is malicious what is not malicious which user has logged in a particular system right which file has been scanned what is the hash value of the file everything will be recorded in the form of logs get in mind question Now, yes yes okay so um say i i believe you you are aware that you know some organizations are no longer using antivirus Do you know what is been using the place of antivirus for endpoints because I know some organizations don't use antivirus. Now now what happens is not everybody I mean this is a new solution came that is called EDR solution EDR XDR endpoint detection response and ex extended detection response right while this antivirus has the reactive approach towards uh, you know the malware so EDR has the active approach get in and there are so many other features and if any you know system you can isolate at the same time there are multiple features that are we are having we have separate badge actually for edr separate so i i'll give the quick overview about the antivirus but some companies started using the edr solution right in ne next generation soc in next generation companies you will see some companies deploy the edr also even we recently got the license for one of the leader tool in the market which is cloud strike last month oh, also okay. we got the license for that in india we are the only one who has the enterprise of license for any trading institution we are the only one who has the enterprise level of license for cloud strike which is a leader in the market for edr next year so we had completed one batch also for that okay so real time scan antivirus <clears throat> see whatever functionality antivirus is having edr is also having right but some more functionality edr is having which antivirus does not have right 
So real time scan means as soon as download any file, click on any file, that time it will do the real time scan, right? And take the action. One is full system scan. Full system scan. Full system scan means whenever you run the scan, it will scan the all files. In the real time scan, what file you download right now, right? New file come, it will scan. It will not scan whole system. Get what I mean? But in full system scan, it will scan full system. All the files it will scan, right? So my question from you is, we already have real time scan. Means whenever new files comes, it will scan. That means whatever file has came to your system, means whatever files are there on the system is already been scanned as part of real time scan. But time to time, maybe once in a 15 days, once in a month, once in a two month, generally not two months, once in a month at least, we run this full scan. Means we schedule your antivirus team will, will schedule the antivirus scan of all the system from central console. They will have central console. For that, they will schedule all the system scans once in a 15 days or once in a month for a system scan. So my question from you is, when I said all the file already scanned by the real time scan, maybe within 15 days, whenever the file has came, then why the need is for real for full scan? Why do we do the full scan? Why we schedule the full scan once in a 15 days or once in a month? Because the file is already came through real time scan, yes or no? So why do we do the full system scan? Any clue on this? To so update what? the applications. Hmm? To update all the applications. Update? Application? No, it's not for update. It's a scanning yes, activity. Yes. So, uh, sir, there should be a possibility that uh, any previous file got uh, replicated uh, once or twice in our system. No. Previous file. See, all the file has came through real-time scanning already, right? So to protect uh, files it came through other sources like USB or something. Huh? No, USB is not allowed. Or in, in case allowed download, also. Download. Case allowed. Uh, hmm? At the time of download, uh, mm -hmm. the antivirus might have or might not have that signature. Okay. This. Then. Um. Just to double double check. No, no double check. See, it's, a, it's not a human. Oh, if any right. signatures are like updated like after like from time to time then it may like um uh, i mean there mm -hmm. might be a file there there might be like, like before that signature was not made then after that update confidential is become um, malicious um, so um, that's um, why correct some people has given the right answer the correct answer is there might be possible that yes, last week you downloaded a file, right? It was actually a malware, but antivirus does not have signature at that time. Yes or no? Antivirus does not have signature at that time. That's the reason antivirus has not taken any action and considered this file illegitimate and it is still there in the system. Later on, antivirus has signature has been updated. They, they added the hash or something that this particular file is malicious, but antivirus will do the real time scanning only as previously, right? So file which already came in the system, antivirus will not scan automatically. Means that particular file is malware, but antivirus does not know that it is there in the system. Yes or no? Because antivirus does the real time scan only. But now antivirus signature has been updated and that particular file is malware but it did not detect on the real time scan. Now with the latest signature, signature updated for example yesterday, latest signature, if we scan, there might be possibility that some undetected file also will be detected as a malicious file with new signature. Get in mind? That is the reason we run the full system scan. Get in mind? That is the work of antivirus team. Time to time, they will run the scan for all the systems and server, whatever they have. Get in mind? Understand? Clear? One question, sir. Yes. Yes, please. Uh, sir, uh, antivirus detection is based on signatures, right? Right. So signature and behavior. Also, behavior also. Hmm. Signature and behavior. Signature and behavior. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So now, if antivirus detect particular file as a malicious file, right? 
what action it generally takes. First action is, for example, particular file is infected with, with virus, for example. Actual file is infected, right? Then antivirus will try to clean it. Then maybe this particular file is infected, but it's been cleaned. Antivirus has cleaned the file. Sometimes you'll see this kind of uh, notification. The file was infected and action is cleaned. Means antivirus has cleaned that particular file, right? So one is the action is clean. Second option is delete. When the particular file itself is a malicious file, malware, antivirus is confident. It's a malware. Antivirus will delete the file. Get a point? Third option is Quarantine, quarantine. Yes or no? Quarantine. Now everybody knows what is quarantine. <laughs> Before COVID, some people I have to you uh, explain this technical word quarantine. Now after COVID, everybody knows what is the meaning of quarantine, right? Quarantine means isolation, right? Isolation for uh, stipulated time for some time, right? So whenever antivirus detect any file is malicious, but it's not hundred percent confident. Maybe seventy five percent. Confident in malicious, but 25% is still there are chances that file may be the important file, a legitimate file, right? If antivirus is 75% sure is malicious and 25% unsure and delete particular file, maybe that is a useful important file for the user, which antivirus has just deleted, right? In that case, antivirus is not going to delete the file at the same time immediately, right? Instead, it will quarantine that file. That means it will move particular file to the isolated folder. For example, your semantic antivirus, you understand, right? Any application that you deploy, ideally, it deploys under C drive. You can see the folder, C drive under program file, then until unless you are not, you have not given any customized folder like D drive or some other folder, right? C drive, then semantic antivirus, right? Then there will be path quarantine folder. C drive, semantic, then quarantine folder will be there, right? So for example, Particular file detected on the on the desk uh, on your on your uh, uh, the desktop on your desktop right from desktop once it detect it will move that file from desktop to quarantine folder quarantine quarantine folder is isolated environment means if it is a malware also there won't be any further infection it's an isolated environment the antivirus create kind of sandbox get it right? the antivirus creates while you install, after you install the antivirus quarantine, right? So once the file is moved to quarantine, you know, malware or any kind of Trojan, right? Viruses, no further infection. But why, then why and antivirus has not deleted the file instead of they have mentioned quarantine? Why they have not deleted? Why antivirus has not deleted the file instead of it has done the quarantine? To examine for hmm? the future. To no. examine the... Not for that. Anybody? Sometimes, uh, sometimes the detection may be false positive. Mm -hmm. So? Like we, we may require that file. Huh? Like we may require that file. Okay, then. So what we can oh, do? Sometimes, sometimes we, can we, can we can exclude, we can exclusions, we can run exclusions on the antivirus. Right. Because here antivirus was not 100% sure it's a malicious file. Maybe it's a user important file, which you ha has just got from the vendor, maybe possible. And if, if antivirus will delete it, it will go on for forever. Yes or no? That's the reason antivirus will move the file of quarantine. And user will get the notification, antivirus has caught a virus or malware. And action is, has been quarantined, right? If user will no longer be able to find that file on desktop, he will call to security team or desktop team. That I had this particular file and been taken by the antivirus or something has it's gone. In that case, we have the option to restore that file from the current folder. We can exclude, we can whitelist this file on the antivirus console. Get in mind? So we can restore that file if required. That is the reason that is in quarantine, but not blindly, not blindly, right? We have to verify with the user from which source you got this file. Yes or no? From where? Who has forwarded this file? Which user? Which vendor? Also, we can verify particular file 
with other antivirus vendors also. There is a good tool, open source, uh, I mean, freeware tool, web tool is VirusTotal, VirusTotal.com. See, in the company, you have, for example, Symantec antivirus only, right? That means Symantec research company only updated the signature, right? Virus total have 60 plus antivirus engine means it has a signature of 60 plus antivirus research companies. Get in mind? So, Symantec antivirus was not 100% sure, right? It's a virus, a malware. And user is also saying that file is not malicious. In that case, you have option to validate whether only Symantec is saying it's virus or other company also saying or other company is showing us clean. So, virus total is very good tool. You guys can explore it. Right. Anyways, in the regular batch, we explore it practically here. But you have option for now if you want to explore. Right. Varastotal.com. Very good website. 99% company in the SOC, people in the SOC use this website. Varastotal.com. Virus, virus spelling, you know? Varastotal.com. You guys explore this website varustotal.com so it has multiple work in varustotal.com you can upload any file which you think that you're not confident malicious or legitimate you can upload this file once you upload the file it will scan it will scan the file right and it will scan against 60 plus antivirus signatures Right, 60 plus antivirus engine will tell whether it is detected as per the signature or not. If apart from Symantec, all other antivirus saying a clean, 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 only Symantec is showing not clean as it was not confident, right? And user is also saying that legitimate file, then we can whitelist this file and restore, right? But if multiple antivirus showing that it is saying that it's not, it's not clean, it's Trojan, it's a malware, it's, it's a uh, you know, it's a spyware or it's a something else, right? That in that case, even user is telling it's a malicious, we can tell that the file is infected, right? And we have to delete that file. Get in mind? Because multiple antivirus engines are showing that it's a malicious. Get in mind? So always, if sometime you get an email or something, right? See, downloading the file may not impact if from, an, from any e emails, right? If you just download the file, do not open that. Do not double click will not impact your system, right? You have to click it to open it. You have to click the file to open to get in your system to, to, to work, you know, this particular malware. You have to open it, right? Sometimes you want to check something you've downloaded or you email you got, right? You may download that email, that attachment, and then you can upload on the virus total. But there are chances, we have to be very careful. There are chances that once you download, even single click you do, it will get open and it will get infected. The machine will get compromised. That's the reason. These things we do not do on the uh, you know, on the production system. We can do in sandbox like as isolated system, or you might have one computer on the guest network, not on the production. Company network means company will have some separate network also, which is not connected with the other server's network. Separate network we call a guest network, which is directly connected to the internet, not with your company, other important critical servers. Right, that network will get guest network. So, right, so in the company, you'll have some computers which is a part of guest network. Right, so there, if you want, you can run such and test this malware. Get in mind. Otherwise, if your system is part of company network, your system got compromised, attacker has gained the access of your network and do something else in, in the whole network. Get in mind. So, uh, anyways, the malware does not run without your action. Any program you download, right? Nothing will happen until unless you open it. Similarly, malware is malicious software, right? Any software required human action, human intervention to open it, run it. So it will not run, but there is a possibility of human error. You download it and just now, by mistake, you clicked it. It will get executed, right? That's the reason. So you can download and upload in the virus total. Get it? Virus total will scan and give the result. Get it? If, if your user is saying it's a not a malicious and antivirus engine also showing a not malicious, you can whitelist, right? That is the reason we do the quarantine and that's the quarantine. If it, if user does not come up, if user does not come up, for example, some file has been quarantined, 
user did not report to desktop team or security team, right? That means it might be malware. The user has not reported it. So this is the this is the operations work of the antivirus, right? Many of the time, file will capture and quarantine. File will, user is not going to uh, come back to security team to all the times, right? So after so quarantine folder has some retention period. You also have fourteen days quarantine, right? So but you come out of out of the quarantine, but your malwares will will be getting deleted after the quarantine. For example, seven days is quarantine period. After seven days, if you does not come back, anti will understand actually it's a malicious file and it will delete forever, permanently delete it after isolation. Seven days, user can report and get it restored if it is legitimate file, otherwise it will get deleted. That is the quarantine option, right? Quarantine action, right? So in this case, generally most of the time, our team, security team do not need to take any action. First, first case is clean, right? It's an operational work on antivirus, no need to take any action. Antivirus will scan the file again, but locks it will record. Uh, what? Eight minute, one minute. Uh, Hold on. Whatever activity it does, it will record the locks, right? It will record the lock. Okay, this system has been, this file has been scanned. This is the hash value, this is the system IP address. This user has logged in. This is the file path. File has been scanned and been cleaned, right? Similarly, scanned and deleted. No, no action required, right? So has been scanned and quarantined. Some malware found has been quarantined. No action is required because anyway, file has been isolated. So no human action is required. Yes or no? That's the operational work of the antivirus. In case particular user has reported sometime that particular file has been quarantined, but important file that only action is required. Otherwise, all this is the operation work on the antivirus. Get it? Right? Ah, yes. Now you can ask. Sir, what is the difference between clean and delete? Clean, I where were you when I explaining? I said whenever file is delete, file is infected. I mean the actual file is infected with the virus, right? It will remove the virus and keep the file as it is. That is what cleaning. Rectification. Rectification. Ah, cleaning, say. repairing, cleaning. Right? Repairing. Sometimes your file has been repaired. Right? That's a that's a different from vendor end to some file render and to look cleaned. Repaired, right? So, by the way, file was infected, oh, it removed right. the virus and kept the actual actual file. Deleted means the file itself was the malware has been deleted. Sir. Yes. If I detect a virus through... Uh, you will not detect, antivirus will detect. Okay, antivirus detect a vi uh, uh, virus through virustotal.com. Then what will we do? In that case, uh, we will not restore. Right. So in that case, is this particular case I'm talking about for now? That user is saying that it's it's an important file, but once you upload a file in the virus total, there are many uh, antivirus engines are showing this file is malicious, it's a malware. In that case, we'll not restore. We'll ask user to ask vendor to send again if it is important file because file is infected or the file is malware. Security okay. is very critical. Okay. <laughs> Sir, do you recommend to upload the files to virus total or only hash value? It depends. It depends. Uh, I mean, both you can do. Uh, if you want, you can extract some company, some critical files you may not upload, right? I believe, but virus total is not going to share the, any information anywhere, but some company may have concern. Okay, there's an important critical file you cannot upload on virus total. Virus total is third party tool. My device total is holding the file that you're uploading. Yes or no? Means exposing your critical data to outside, right? If any company has the concern, then you can, you know, uh, have, uh, you can, uh, uh, you know, export, you can retrieve the hash value also, right? And your system, whatever file you have, you retrieve the hash value, then you can uh, enter the hash value on the virus total. In virus total, either you upload the file or you enter the hash value particular file, right? Based on that also, you can get the information. Thank you. Okay, got it? Clear? Okay. Anybody else? I have one yeah, question. Yeah, so bottom, bottom yes. this side. Yeah, I have some uh, uh, instead of can we not use encryption mode to upload the files? Yes, I'm not getting you. Encrypt, encrypted uh, uh, files, I, I'm asking. So encrypted file, use... encrypted yes, file. See, see, if if file is encrypted, right? 
it may not be the malware then because encrypted file if it is password protected can antivirus will also not be able to clean, uh, scan as well as the file also malware also will not get installed because it's encrypted right in order yes, to see yeah. anything inside antivirus should have access to all the codes all the you know everything contained of the file antivirus will not be able to scan the encrypted file Get your mind? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so okay. much. But I have one question, please. Yes. Go ahead. One question. Please. Sir. I have a list of uh, okay. ma malware uh, IPs and uh, URL links in your file, and I saved that file, uh, uh, suppose on the desktop, and uh -huh. uh, taken the hash value of the file, mm -hmm. and then we checked in the virus total, but it came clean. Is it mm -hmm. correct? I mean, it's possible, it's possible it can be a zero day malware. It can be a zero day. Okay. If your virus total, your antivirus does not capture, right? It's yeah. a zero day malware where nobody has signature. No antivirus has the signature, right? You might have heard the news, right? Several companies have been compromised, right? Every company has the antivirus. Not every company using Symantec antivirus or Tempomic antivirus, right? They have diverse background, a diverse uh, vendor, right? Some trend micro, some McAfee, some uh, cement tech, right? But so uh, so for many antivirus. So many of the companies are getting compromised, right? With the same malware. If you had the news in 2017, Wanakar ran somewhere. More than 260, uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, there are so many, more than 100 companies, more than 100 countries, more than 100 company, countries, thousands of companies, the rate of what compromised ran somewhere, Wanakarai, right? It's a kind of malware only, but it's a zero day malware, right? That means none of the antivirus has the signature. None of the antivirus vendor has the signature, right? In that case, either you go has value or upload anything, it will show clean, clean, clean only, right? Because nobody knows. Get your mind? Clean. What happens if you put the sleep feature in the malware? Say, uh, for example, uh, a sleep uh, 10,000 when we generate the malware. Your voice so, is not clear. Uh, Keep your mic a little bit far from your mouth. It's not clear. It's, it's a little, little away. Keep your mic. Audible? Hmm. Sir, my question is, if, uh, if uh, uh, we put sleep feature in the malware so that uh, it will perform all the action after 10 days or 15 days, so what will be our action? I could not get it because your voice was not very clear. Sir, Everybody understood what he said. Sir, can you define what is signature? Signature is pretty fine information. Based on that, any device will take that. So for example, has value, right? Has value, the list of has values of infected uh, malwares or viruses. We do the signature here, right? Signature is nothing but the predefined information. For firewall, IP address, port, malicious IP address, list of malicious IP address, port numbers are signature. For proxy, list of, uh, you know, the malicious sites are signature. For email gave a list of domains, email IDs are signature, right? Signature is nothing but the predefined information. Based on that, any security device will identify particular, you know, uh, the file, particular IP, or any data is any content is malicious. Sir, sir, can you explain the crowd strike a little bit? What? Crowd strike. Crowd strike, we have separate training for that. Crowd okay. strike EDR tool. I, I said crowd strike is the EDR tool and it and point detection and response. Apart from detection, it has the reference feature also. For example, if your machine is infected with malware, right? As an action, you have to isolate the machine. So you don't have EDR, you have to call desktop team or network team to isolate the machine from the network, you remove from the network, otherwise further infection will happen. Right? But your EDR sensors will be installed on each and every devices and through EDR console within a single click you can isolate any machine. Right? So it has some extra features from the antivirus. Apart from antivirus features, it have extra features. Understand? Have, if there, been, have there been a solution for advanced persistent threats in a situation where you now have, you know, the warm um um conducting a kind of lateral movement around the network, you know, mm. uh, and living in the network for a longer period of time. Has there been a detection for such advanced persistent threats? 
Uh, for that, you may buy a dedicated device, APT devices, or there are certain use cases that we can create on the SIM. Certain use cases that we create. Advanced persistent threat, that means threat is already inside your network, right? That means your security devices are not able to detect when it came to your network, right? So yes. certain use cases, certain movement, something will happen definitely if threat is inside already, right? Based on the movement, based on the activities, we can have some sort of use cases on your SIM. So now, can we consider a defender as EDF? Uh, what? Yeah, Microsoft can Defender is now having an EDR facility functionality. Before it was kind of antivirus only, but now it has the EDR. Hello, sir. Thank you. Yes. What are the process are done in the quarantine? Process means will just move to quarantine. Can you elaborate Sorry. what you want? What do you want? What do you want? How, what do you want? how many times it can be live in quarantine? How many times? How many days or hours? It ah, depends sir. how much you configure. Maybe one day, five days, seven days, ten days, right? How much you want, you can configure. Ah, okay. So if you want seven days, it will be seven days. After that, it will be deleted automatically, right? Seven days is enough. If you are giving okay. long days, then your C drive will get full. Yes or no? Slowly, slowly, if you have multiple detection, then it will take some storage to keep the file. Okay, so thank you, sir. So during quarantine process, oh, like oh, what exactly oh, uh, things will happen there? What? During the quarantine process, hmm. so uh, what exactly uh, uh, that uh, system will undergo? Quarantine process means it cannot do anything. That is isolated. It will be kind of isolated from the network. Means okay. It will try to connect out, it will block. All the activities will be blocked. Okay. Okay, let's move ahead. Okay. At the end of the session, you may ask the question after 10 o'clock. I just okay. have one question. So look. Last question. Okay. Uh, so, like you said, we can get the hash value of any file. So, right. like how do we check that? Like, uh, if any there is any new file which is coming through mail or anywhere, how do we check those hash value of the files? There are multiple ways. First of all, uh, once you download the file, right? There is a command. That's a homework for you now. There is a command. You can run, write the command on CMD, write the path of the file and name of the file, right? Once you run this command, it will show you what is the hash value of the particular file with no internet connection even. With even no internet connection, you can get the hash value of the file by CM, by command. Bhaiya, mute hai yaar. Shekhar, that's the last chance I'm telling you. If anybody, if I see not asking question and, and not in mute, I will remove you from the meeting. And your Mac ID will blocked from the from from this Zoom. You'll know you'll not be able to rejoin again the session. Okay, so make sure that the, if if you are not muting with the mic, not asking question and noise is coming, that means you are not focusing the class, right? There will be no sense of joining the class. Yes or no? Been told multiple times. Do not keep your mic unmuted. If you are unmuting, keep it for a long time, that means you are not listening to the class, right? No sense of joining the class. In this case, I'll have to remove you. So one is through a command line, right? Through a command line without even internet, right? You can run that command. You can give the you know file name and path, and you should be able to see the hash values, right? Third thing, there are many applications are there. You can download application. Uh, uh, there is a name, applications. But there are, once you search the studio. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. PE Studio, generally we use for malware analysis also PE Studio that we use where we can extract, you know, uh, the hash values. Some other some other applications also available, right? And similarly, virus total also if you upload, it will it scan the file, it will give the all hash values. Generally, it does the MD5, right? But if you go in the detail, it will see the SSA256, MD5, uh, 512, SSA1, all the hash values it will show. Did you mind? Got it? Clear? Yes. Okay, so uh, now, Kalito uh, uh, has value with Lavena, has Varnatana, Proxman Kira Kalana. Take it. The first, first action was cleaning, deletion, quarantine, and last one was left alone. Left alone. Different entities give the different name, but if you talk about cement and alone, keep spelling you, A L O N E. Hmm. So, semantic and will give the action left alone. Left alone means 
when antivirus is unable to clean or delete any file there will be sometimes antivirus has detected particular file is malicious but unable to delete or unable to clean that means unable to take any action get in mind sometime there will be some scenarios where antivirus is unable to clean or unable to delete the file it is a malicious file or it can be malicious file but unable to clean or unable to delete in that case the action will be left alone right the new file is still there in that case your action is required right as soon as you get an alert saying that file was uh, i mean semantic and or antivirus has captured the virus or malware but action is left alone in that case you need to take an action get in mind you need to take action and you have to do the manual delete in that case right in that case if it is malware you can scan the system from malware byte okay. malware byte is again a antivirus only but it is having 30 plus antivirus engine 30 plus antivirus engine signature is having it can the key i think isko remove hi karna padega okay remove him from my meeting ah uh, what i'm saying is uh, malware byte is one of the antivirus it has signature from 30 plus antivirus engine sometimes you will see your antivirus is not able to delete or sometimes it is not sure also when 50% sure 50% unsure it's a virus it may not delete the file in that case it will generate only logs alert that particular fi uh, file detected in this particular system is, is malware right in that case you need to take the action you can ask in this case you can ask desktop team you can tell desktop team to install malware byte and scan the whole system from the malware byte and share the logs if malware byte detected this particular file as a malware as an action it will delete the file delete or repair the file right if malware has byte has not detected right still that is the reason in this case you ask desktop team to install malware byte and share the scanning logs why we ask them to share the scanning logs after doing the scanning we ask them okay do one thing this particular system is infected do one thing install malware byte and scan the system right and share the scanning logs to the sock team for what purpose we ask them to share the logs scanning logs after scanning hmm anybody what purpose we ask antivirus team to share the scanning logs we need to review the logs for what yes, purpose uh, to find that uh, that uh, the, that hacker file is there or that is malicious or not that's correct and whether antivirus has taken any action or not yeah it yeah still there or it has taken deleted or clean or something has been done or not we'll verify mm -hmm. on the logs right text of name yeah. may not be that much of technical right so that's the reason we ask them a desktop team to scan the system and share the scanning logs to us so that we can review those logs whether antivirus means malware byte has taken any action or not for example this particular system was infected you got left known and antivirus has deleted the file after two three days again alert has come again same and same malware has come again left alone again you removed again you scanned so if any of the system is re i mean any of the malware reoccurred on particular system right reoccurring on particular system then me two three times it came right then sometime interviewer ask right same malware is coming on same system again again there are possibility right there are possibility that that is the reason we do not delete any malware ourselves if any program is installed the malware software is installed if you delete yourself there might be process that you uninstall the malware right but it's residual such as some process registry entries are also there already there and it may reoccur again yes or no that's the reason we delete it through antivirus so that uh, it can kill all the processes it can uninstall and can delete all the registry entries but sometime there is a possibility log kuch log chipak jate hai na bilkul there is a possibility that uh, uh, some malwares Uh, their process are not being killed the, the registry entry is not the residual all residual is is still left and it may reoccur so what action will you take if three four times same malware is reoccurring on the same system 
what action will you take in that case? What do you think? Anybody? So we, we, need to define a, we need to define a rule that uh, if the same file is getting uh, detected, so uh, it's supposed to be quarantine. Or it should uh, detect... Uh, it no, it's deleted already. The quarantine means again, deleted an option, right? It is getting deleted or deleted means left alone, but but you can do that. But but in that case, I mean, there is no. I don't think that there is such rule that if left alone again and again, then it should be quarantine. I don't think there are any such rules, right? So if so we, quarantine the system, hmm. we will add, uh, add that file to the excluded file. system. Excluded. And that file is malicious. Actually, you scan it and delete it, right? That is file is malicious. Hmm. We image the system. That is the last option now, right? If any, if machine is getting infected again and again, either same virus or different virus, different malware, in that case, you should re-image the system. You should isolate your machine from the network, right? And you should re-image the system, right? So first action, whenever you see your machine is infected, 100% sure your machine is infected, first action is to isolate the machine first from the network. First action, whenever you see your machine is infected, confirm that the machine is infected. The first action is isolate the machine from the network. Then only we do the scanning activity and everything. That means if malware reoccurred or it kind of critical malware such as ransomware and all, right? In that case, we reimage the reimage the system. Means we format the system and install the operating system. Remind. Sir, if machine is on, not online, sir, if machine is not online, so the scan will not perform, right? We cannot push the scan. Ah, uh, of course, of course means all our. I mean, through central console, we cannot do the console. Desktop team can do that. Desktop team can do that, right? Desktop team, local desktop team, can still perform the scan. Yes, sir. thank you. Okay, so the last option is. If malware reoccurring, right? Last option is reimage the machine. Reimage means format. That means reinstalling the operating system, right? And uh, 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 when we see the high severity uh, malware, such as ransomware, right? This kind of infection will happen. Then re you should reimage the machine, right? That is the reason. Reimage means completely data gone. Data will be completely gone, right? Understand? Means you will lose the data. That is the reason it's being recommended. Do not keep any critical data on your desktop. Yes or no? You never know when your system will get infected and you, when your system will have to be rebased. You will have, your company will have shared drive. S-H-A-R-E-D, shared. Shared drive, right? Where you can, shared drive in network drive, network storage. You will see the path on your, uh, my computer uh, folder, right? You see path, you can just click it there. The folder setter will open. You can keep any data, critical data there. Why? Because you never know when your system will have to re get reimaged and you lose the data. Critical data should be there, the CR drive, because your system backup is not happening either. In most of the most of the cases, a desktop laptop backup is not happening. Backup means understand backup, right? Backup will not happen. You can mean you cannot restore the data, you lose the data. Critical file you should keep on the CR drive. Right, your shared drive will have the backup. Ideally, they take the incremental backup of every 24 hours, really generally night time, right? Every day they take the backup, right? Or most of the time, incremental live backup also, real time backup also they take, depending on company to company. But at least 10, once in 24 hours, definitely they will take the backup. So, in case shared drive, sometimes shared drive will get infected. There are possibility like kind of a ransomware attack. In ransomware attack, whenever ransomware, you understand, right? No, so, uh, ransomware I cover in the sock. I ransomware yes, I cover in the uh, 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 ransomware I cover in the sock regular batch itself. That uh, uh, this is a high security incident, high security case. So end to end we cover how it comes, what kind of investigation you have to do, right? Analysis, how to remediate whole. So one of the critical incident, high security incident. So uh, what are you telling? Uh, Ah, ransomware, if your system is infected with ransomware, right? What all access, for example, user has logged in, 
Sachin has logged in. Sachin has logged in. So whatever access Sachin is having, right? Those all files will get encrypted. Sachin has mapped with shared drive also, and shared drive also access he has using. Shared drive will also get infected. Get in mind? So whatever access you have in the network, any any shared drive has been mapped, right? Any uh, drive that you have, right? Network drive has been mapped, right? All the data will get encrypted, right? So we have seen many cases, many of the shared drive get encrypted. But CL guide, shared drive, you can restore the data from backup. But system backup, you cannot restore because most of the company does not have the desktop laptop workstation backup. That mind? Understand? So that is called as left alone. So we have to be careful. We have to take some action when there is a left alone. So that is the reason, uh, you know, you know, uh, latest signature, right? Whenever antivirus team will do the research and get new signature, right? So whenever you have, for example, ransomware come, right? And your antivirus did not detect it. That's the reason your system got infected, right? So now you have option. So on that session, I explained, right? If hundred of users have received the email, how we can reach out to them, how we can remediate everything. So uh, uh, so now once it is infected, you have option to, uh, to update this file to the antivirus vendor, Symantec or any vendor. It is a particular file is actually ransomware, but its signature is not there, right? They will create a signature and they will release the signature. So next time this company, other company will receive the same malware, the antivirus will capture it. That means they will release, release the signature, right? Or once you update the signature, if anybody else had got the email, the signature is updated, then once it is open, it will capture by the antivirus. It will detect by the antivirus. Signature is updated. That's why it is mean recommended means it's mandatory to keep your antivirus signature up to date all the time. Or all the devices, antivirus is the endpoint, right? You have access, but uh, all your network device security devices should have the latest signature. All security devices should have the latest signature, right? Understand? Signature different based on the type of devices, right? So antivirus signature, because you see, right? You install in your system, sometimes alerts come, your antivirus signature definition is out of date. With latest viruses, keep the signature up to date. Yes or no? Or, or, or else, when you, uh, you know, you're, when your subscription expires, that time also you do not get any update. And it shows your antivirus definition is out of date, right? So we have to ensure that our antivirus should be up to date. Otherwise, the latest malware, latest viruses which are coming, antivirus will not have signature. Antivirus take the money for signature only. Yes or no? If antivirus uh, is expired, expired, it will still work, but based on the old signature, because it is not receiving the new signature. That's the only work of the antivirus team. That's the work of the antivirus team that ensure that all the systems in the, uh, in the network should be up to date. You will know I mean? have central console. Central console will go to manager. Manager will receive the update from the cloud. From the, and it will push the update to each and every system. Then you have for the GUP update provider. So each and every system will not download from, from cloud if they are connected to the company network. Because if every you know system will download 1 GB, 2 GB, 3 GB signature file, right? Then your whole band will get choked. Yes or no? Because, for example, uh, some less severity, less severity signature comes in particular time. Not every day you get the signature update, right? High severity signature, you'll get the real-time update. As soon as the company will create a signature, they will push. But some schedule signature you'll get every Wednesday, like Windows, every Wednesday, update will come in the corporate, every Wednesday. Right. Similarly, they are they schedule the date every Wednesday. So, for example, this is today is Wednesday, and antivirus will get the update. Now, every client you have four lakhs employee, every client will go to the internet and download the update. Two GB, three G file means your full bandwidth will get choked. People will not be able to work. Right. That is the reason. What will happen? Your antivirus manager, central console, will get the update from the cloud. Only one system will get the update. Ideally, right? And then local system, local, it will push locally. Local bandwidth is big, right? LAN bandwidth. It, and again, if LAN bandwidth also, there are four lakhs computer, maybe four lakhs computer LAN bandwidth also get choked. Then 100, 200 computers, it will nominate one computer as GUP, group update provider. For example, every 100 computer, for example, I'm telling one computer, uh, manager will send the update to one computer that we call a GUP, group update provider. The name itself is a group update provider. 
It will send the update to UUP, and UUP will distribute the update to hundred computers. This UUP hundred computer, this UUP hundred computer means manager also will not have to send the update to all four four lakh computer. It will send the update to UUP. Got it? Man? Then they will distribute the update. But they all systems has the anything installed, and they will be reporting the status to manager, the central console. And central console you can see which green, green, green or red, green, red or yellow sign. Green means update with latest signature. Yellow means previous signature. Uh, red means maybe offline. Client is offline, right? So you can see when the signature has been updated. Whether all the systems are having data updating, you know. That's the only work of antivirus team. Main work. Whenever antivirus person team will go, it, they will open on the manager and see whether antivirus all updated or not. If any antivirus is not updated, not updated, they can push it through manager itself. Particular system updated, they can push it through manager. Or if some set of computers are not getting the update. We'll check whether GUP itself is up or down. Maybe GUP itself is down. Yes or no? So it not send the update to others. Sometimes GUP is not always a server. Any desktop, laptop, workstation can also be known as GUP. It's a normal antivirus client. We promote it as a GUP. Maybe in particular uh, group, one of the computer you have noted as a GUP, but somebody has shut down the computer. GUP will not receive the update and it will not distribute also. Yes or no? In that case, so uh, antivirus team have troubleshoot the problem. Why anti sometimes update pushed by the GUP has been failed? Yes or no? Then antivirus will look at and push the update from the manager. Yes or no? Or some problems are there on the client, right? They will uninstall the client, reinstall the client. These all the work is done by the antivirus team to ensure that all the systems should be up to date. And second thing, they schedule the scanning, full system scanning. 15 days, once in a 15 days, right? For example, okay, this sort I'm scanning the system today. Uh, next day, this, this all set of system has been scheduled. Next day, this set of system has been scheduled for full, full system scan, right? Anything has been found, they will take the action. So, right? sometimes, uh, you know, it will become recommend action, recommended action you, you have to do, right? So, that is some. So, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, uh, then what about the laptop? Desk, laptop? laptop user might be working from home. Might be some time working from home, not connecting to the office network. If they will connect to the office network, you will push the update. But when they are not in, in that at home, one they will at home, they will connect to the company VPN network. That will be the part of company network. That time the update will get pushed. Or you have option to configure. First preference is company GUP, company antivirus manager, GUP. Second is cloud. If few days you are not connecting, to the company network, then NTO will download the update directly from the cloud. Can you mind? So you have option. Secondary option you can configure as a cloud. First is company network, second is cloud. Can you mind? It will download laptop user can download directly, I mean automatically from the cloud. Because that is the reason uh, we push the update from the uh, you know manager only. Otherwise, user may not updating. Your antivirus also sometimes you do not update. Are you two GB file here? Quantum download, right? Even you you tell them to download, upload also, download also, still some user may not download, right? That's the reason we make it centralized, right? And we do it ourselves. Your uh, end user also cannot disable the antivirus; they cannot do all those stuff, right? So that is uh, you know the antivirus and how we can plan the uh, you know uh, updates of the antivirus. So we create the rules also in the sim. Because all the logs will generate to the antivirus, all the device will, will be going to the sim, right? We can create a rule also, alert also. Antivirus signature has been failed to update. We should get an alert. If any antivirus manager has pushed the update, but update got failed, we should get an alert. So we can update to antivirus team that, okay, this particular system has failed to update. Kindly update the signature. Because not updating the signature means security concern, security issue. Maybe particular system will got com compromised after some time. Very concerned, right? Understand? So, uh, fail to update or antivirus detected a virus, we should get an alert on the SIM, right? So, see, many of the devices generate, generate the alert also, but if we get the alert from multiple devices, that's a problem, right? You have to check on the antivirus differently alert, you have to IPS alert differently. So, that is when we have SIM. Now, all the alert will be generated by SIM only, centralized. And all the alert you can monitor on the SIM. No need to monitor different, different devices separately. It will be centralized. With centralized team, we call a SOC, Security Operation Center, centralized team. You have multiple offices in different countries, but SOC is one, centralized. That's what you call a SOC. 
security operation center center means in sarkar how many center you have right one right the center we call as is centralized operation center centralized operations security operation centralized means center okay understand that was the anti virus if uh, you know uh, edr is standard means uh, uh, you know the extra features that edr is having uh, we call as uh, uh, endpoint detection and response right and uh, extended version of that is again extended detection response sdr so the crowd style license that we have we have uh, uh, edr and sdr both the features it's a small it's not a bigger device like sim i mean it's not a big device like sim uh, multiple features so it's a small device kind of anti was some feature is having not big it takes around 20 25 hours training for edr so will that be covered in this uh... it is not a part of sock batch if we cover it then the cost of this uh, sock training will be much higher and people may not afford it because license is not cheaper the cost will be much higher of sock batch that is it's not mandatory but it's good to have it's not mandatory to get the job but it is good to have sir if anyone asks what is the basic difference between edr and endpoint so what we need to say if you want that i will share the document because if i start covering all this then our detail topics will not be covered no in one line in you one line you can send that you can send that it works on the it, yeah antivirus has the reactive approach but edr have the active approach right now <clears throat> उसके बाद क्या है अभी आईपीएस आईडीएस और कोई डिवाइस छोटा तो नहीं लास्ट डिवाइस है दिस इज लास्ट डिवाइस उसके बाद मैं आपको प्रॉक्सी एंड वीपीएन बताता हूँ उसके बाद वीपीएन चलो पहले वीपीएन बताता हूँ वीपीएन हाँ सॉरी VPN stand for virtual private network. Virtual private network. Network. Virtual private network. That means it's not a private network, but virtually it is private. That means there are two types of network, right? One is private, another is another is. Public public, 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 public. So, you tell me one thing. This is this is private network or public network. This is private public. or public? Public, 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 right? public network. And this is public network. Private, 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 private right? Network. network. right this is private and this is public the name is vpn means virtual private, private network so this is already a private network and this is public network so vpn will be here working here or here inside the inside internet the internet the name is virtual private network mean the network is actually public Inside the private. Virtually, thing. it will make it private. private. Yes or no? If you break down the meaning, right? Name itself suggests virtual private network. I mean, over the public network. If you correct private, yes or no? That is called as virtual private network. Means virtually it will private, but it is public. Calibine, understand? So you know what happens in this case. In case of VPN, for example, you have some systems. Uh, this system ten dot zero dot zero dot. This particular system, or these servers, these particular all systems, you want to give the access. You want to give the access to this people, this person, or some other people. You want to give the access. So you understand? These people, this person is connected to the public network. 
or it may have its own private network and its own private network. Both are connected using the public network. Yes or no? So if I want to give access to these computers, to this computer, this IP will not work. Yes or no? Because it's a private IP and private IP will not be identified over the internet. That means if I want to give access to these all computers, I have to assign which IP? Public IP. Yes or no? Then only public can go inside and access this computer. But you understand, if I will assign public IP, one is cost. And second thing, if this can come here, other people from the internet can start targeting these systems. Yes or no? So I cannot give the public IP address to all the servers inside servers, critical server I cannot expose to the internet. Giving public IP address to any of the computer means exposing your system to the public network. In public network, you have good people, good pe bad people, right? Good people will go in the legitimate way and bad people will come with the with the Bad intention activity. of doing performing some bad activities yes or no so this is not a solution but you know that uh, my people working remotely working from home some people are traveling australia new zealand but they need to connect to the company network and my company also geographical separated i have branch in usa i have branch in india right all people should be able to communicate because these servers which are having every people from different locations should be able to access Right? One solution for that, if you have different branches, one solution for that is you buy a dedicated line. Dedicated pipe you buy. From internet service provider, you buy a dedicated pipe from here to here. Means you have company network, right? This is different branch, this is a different branch. You buy a pipe, separate pipe, that we call it MPLS. Means direct dedicated lease line. Means that line is only for you. Get in mind? But that is very costly solution. Not everybody com company can buy it, right? Big company will have this MPLS solution, a dedicated lease line. Dedicated pipe, yep. Water will flow. Means I can only go this, this way. No, nobody else. That is called a MPLS, right? Other solution is VPN. For example, I am telling you this particular person. This particular person is a remote user has to access this company resources, right? So this, this person has a public IP address, of course, and this system is a private IP. We cannot assign public IP address. So how we can access, right? So what we can do is we can create a, we can use a VPN technology, virtual private network technology. There are devices uh, which come VPN devices. The firewall also many of the firewall have the inbuilt VPN feature. Like our Fortinet firewall we have here. We have the VPN feature also, right? So in that case, it will create virtual private network. Means it's a, it's a, it's a you know, it's a public network, right? It will virtual private network. Means the communication will be encrypted with SSL, secure socket layer. Means over the public network, it will create virtually private network. That means the communication will be encrypted with SSL. Tell me, secure socket layer. That one, that's the only challenge, right? That only it will create a dedicated tunnel. It will create a communication will get input one thing, and it will create a dedicated tunnel inside that. That means only you can go. It will create directly tunnel. So what will happen? For example, this is a VPN firewall. This is a VPN device. VPN device is IP address 199.0.2.100. VPN device should have public IP address. VPN should have public IP addresses. Then only the system will be able to connect this. So now you have to install one client on the system, right? You have to enter the IP address of your VPN device and port number. For example, port number is 443. Once you connect, once you enter IP address port number and username and password will be created here. So that it's not happened that unnecessarily any other people also install the VPN and they're able to connect. IP address port number is not difficult to, to, to get, right? But the username and password will be created. Once you enter username and password, one private tunnel will be created. Get in mind? Now, private tunnel over public network, 
one dedicated private tunnel will be created and you will be shifted virtually that is with virtual private network virtually you will be actually shifting from your home to this network once you connect to vpn your system will also get the private ip of your network range if you do the ip config you will get this ip address whatever range of ip address being given in virtually you are shifted from here to here after connect once you enter vpn password enter username and password you will be connected to vpn that means you are actually virtually shifted from here to here now by default whatever internet access you do you access facebook.com or any communication you do your communication will not go directly to the internet because you are connected to this tunnel right your communication will go from here to here then you this internet because virtually tunnel has been created right you are virtually shifted from here to here actually now you are the part of this network and whatever internet access you do right this system ip this firewall ip will go to the internet not your ip public ip you virtually shifted from here to here and you will get private ip also sorry kya ho gaya ye dikh to ha Hmm. Hmm. You you get the private IP right, and virtually you'll be shifted here. Whatever internet access you do, the connection will flow like this. Means what well, from here to here and here to here internet. In this case, whatever internet access you do, your public IP will not go to internet. Instead, your company IP will go to internet. Like people sitting in a company and accessing some internet website, and you will be able to access all the resources what access have been given to you. All are having private IP address. By sitting at home, you can access all systems, all server, whatever access has been given to you. That means even you are a public part of your home network, right? Public network. But once you connect to VPN, virtually you'll be shifted from here to here, but not actually, not physically, right? That means it create a virtual tunnel. Virtual tunnel means all data will get encrypted. Virtual tunnel will be created, and you'll be shifted virtually from here to here. That is the reason people from work from home they are doing. They're able to connect to the company network after connecting to VPN. Once you connect to VPN, they can take the remote access of this all this server. Like you are sitting in the company, means you can get the same access. What person sitting here and accessing all the resources, internal resources? Similarly, you are sitting here and you can access, access all the resources. What access is being given to you? Same, same access you will have here also and here also. Okay, even virtually you have been shifted here. So what, what website you access? Everything you'll go to the company. This this IP address, not your IP address. Yes or no? Understand? Clear this point, right? That is called this VPN is called a site uh, remote access VPN or SSL VPN. This is remote access VPN or SSL VPN. Any people working from home, any people who are working, they are having field job, right? Any time from anywhere, Australia, India, they connect to the network and and they complete their work, right? That is called as Uh, uh, remote access VPN or SSL VPN, right? Another VPN is called side-to-side -side VPN. It's update or right? Yeah, not right. Ah, uh, sir. Nowadays, like uh, our organization is not using VPN; they are using uh, AWS Work Stream. So, is that also kind of VPN? It's a kind of VPN only, yes. It's kind of VPN only. These are AWS work stream or anything any application, right? Either VPN, they're having the, for example, Fortic client. Fortic client will not say it's a VPN, right? Name is Fortic client, right? So side to side, side to side VPN, right? You should not say that nowadays not using, right? People who will use the cloud, they will use their AWS, right? People have the on premises, they want to connect to company network, they have to use VPN only. Get in mind? So side to side VPN means if there are two sites. For example, you have office in Bangalore, another office in Mumbai, right? You have hundred thousand user here, two thousand user here. Now, if Mumbai people want to access something which is there in the Bangalore, they have to connect to the VPN. Everybody has to connect to the VPN. That's a hard attack every time, right? Because all our company only, but always they have to connect to the VPN. So what happens in this case? Two sites, and both the sites we can deploy VPN device. Two, one VPN device here, and one VPN device here, and both can connect together. Establish a connection. Now anybody from here can connect to here. Anybody can here can connect to here. 
in this device you need two devices on both the side if you have five five sides to be connected then five devices you have to connect with each other to establish the side to side communication side to side vpn through vpn side to side vpn it is both the devices will connect together and end user will not have to connect install the vpn client and do not have to connect with the vpn get in mind so uh, that is how <laughs> Yes. Ah, uh, so, uh, if we are in a pu uh, public space uh, and we want to connect in a private network of right. our company, then uh, is there any necessity to uh, there to be there in a remote connection to get a remote connection of, uh, of our company? Of course, without VPN, how will you connect? Because private IP will not be identified on the internet. The IP address that you are entering, private IP, is not the owned by your company only, right? Almost all yeah. the companies have the private IP address. That is the reason private IP address are not being identified over the internet. If you want to connect to your private IP to your com company, then first of all you have to connect to VPN only. Then only you'll be able, able to take the remote access or do anything. Oh, thank you, sir. What is VPN? What is VPN? VPN. What I'm not getting you, sir. VPN. V, Pam, Pam, V, Pam, V, Pam, V, Pam. Yes. I did not hear this word. Vendor privilege access management, because it's not related to VPN. That is not related to VPN. If you ask any sort of word, if you tell right, which is not related, I will not be able to answer. If it is related to the same thing, then you can ask. Ask. If it is a different word altogether, I may not understand. I will like. I would try to correlate with this. That is a different thing, not related to this. It's privilege access management. It's the access management uh, tool, huh? But huh, there is a limit. Of course, there is a limit based on the capacity. Based on the capacity, throughput. A smaller device having less resources, less people can connect. If you big company, you have thousand of users connect. Based on that, you have to buy a different model of device, different models, different model, different hardware and software requirement. Different resource requirement, right? So that is how you understand, right? You understand one thing, the concept. Then remote access from home. Once you connect to the VPN, you have to enter while installing the VPN client. You have to enter the IP address of this VPN system and port number. Once you configure, then next time onward user and password. Once you connected, once you that means you are connected to the VPN. Any website to access. It will go through here, then here. That means it will it, your VPN IP address will go to the internet. For example, Facebook you are accessing. Facebook you will see the message coming from this particular IP address, not from your IP address. Get in mind your IP will be hidden behind the VPN because your connection is being routed from here to here. You know, same configuration, same deployment we also have here. We have Fortinet VPN. So previously, I mean, of course. Uh, to access the VP, uh, lab, you have to first connect to the VPN. Then only you have to take the remote access to the server to do the practice. It's been around seven years back. Uh, I'm telling you one uh, situation. What happens is, I used to get the VPN access. People used to that time internet was not cheaper. Seven eight years back, right? We get 500 GB plan or 300 GB plan, right? Like that, like that. I have given lab access initially. I seen within five days only, five hundred six seven days. 500 GB data got adjusted after given VPN access. What could be the reason? You know what happens? People got the VPN access. They connect to my network. They used to do the practice. After that, once they will done, once they are done with the practice, they should disconnect the VPN, right? They should disconnect. But they did not disconnect. They were not disconnecting, right? They was the movie on YouTube. Other things they were downloading, right? Now, once you download using VPN, your bandwidth, your internet also will charge you, exhaust the data. At the same time, you are connected from here to here and going to the internet. That means my bandwidth is also utilizing. If multiple people do like this, they watch movie, download something, that means my bandwidth also will get overutilized. And that is within a few days, my all bandwidth got adjusted. The data got adjusted. Get in mind? You go directly here to here, here to here. Then, and also there are chances 
uh, people, I mean, anyways, uh, not going to do this. So in this case, there's a solution. So what solution I have implemented so that people, while they're connected to my company network, their data should go from here to here. While they're accessing the internet, like Facebook or other website, which is not related to my network, they should go directed to their internet, not from my internet. So anybody knows what configuration we can apply? Web access control. Anybody? Are you the maximum gear of UV? It's gone from my mind. What we call as with the magma it have it. That what we can do. Anybody knows from firewall team? I I missed out that word. What we are doing here. Uh, just now I missed out word. We can apply uh, on the VPN device so that. Uh, 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 VPN traffic will go through this one, and all other traffic will go through directly their internet. So, what do you say? Split tunnel. Split tunneling. Tunneling. Split filter. Split tunneling. Split tunneling. That we call as split tunneling. Yes, it's tunneling. Split tunneling. Spelling wrong. Is split tunneling. Split split tunneling. Right, you can apply split tunneling on a VPN, so it will split the traffic. Your the internal traffic through come through VPN, and all other traffic through come through directly through the internet. Right. So now, using this VPN, so it might be some people might not be working in the company. Still, they have heard this word VPN. For what purpose you use the VPN? You use the play oh, because. PUBG is banned in India, right? So have you ever thought about it? How after VPN connection, connect to VPN, you are able to access PUBG? IP address. IP address we are um, hiding the IP address. Because you know what happens? Because many, uh, there are many people, right? Connect to the VPN. The free VPN also available. Sometimes they're charging some plan also, right? So uh many other people are accessing vpn uh, using vpn to access some blocked website the website which is blocked on your india there's some other purpose also but mainly people like you me and other people are accessing vpn to access some block website right you understand right whenever uh, block means uh, whenever any application or any website has to be blocked Government only go uh, ISP will not block anything for you by default on their firewall. But when government asks them, so ISP will block, you know, uh, the IP addresses, domains, DNS entry will removed from the DNS server, right? Then only ISP will block the IP address or domains on their firewall. Get mind? So once you access, for example, PUBG or any website, right, or any application. With generated traffic on a particular IP address, right? It will go to go to the, uh, you know uh, go to the uh, you know uh, ISP firewall. I firewall will understand oh, this particular IP address is blocked. You will not be able to access or any application PUBG application you install again. It will connect to one IP address only, right? Or domain domain, right? Domain itself will not result to any IP address on the on the ISP DNS, right? They will be blocked. In that case, you will no longer will be able to access. Now, now. He liked the game very much. He had to play, right? So now what he's doing is he came to know. So VPN you can access, right? Now VPN, what accessing? What happening in the VPN? Once you connect to VPN, once you connect to the VPN, you are connect, connected to the, for example, you, US, in USA, in USA, PUBG is allowed, right? So once you connect, the VPN service provider will have the VPN server connect, uh, deployed on the USA. Once you connect to VPN, that means you are connected to the ESC server, right? So once you connect, your ISP come to know that you're connected to this particular IP address and this IP address is allowed on the ISP firewall, right? Then you are connected. Now all the communication happening from here to here is encrypted. Means your ISP firewall will not be able to see what communication you're doing. It's encrypted format, right? Now, once you connect to the PUBG or any application, blocker application, it is happening through through private tunnel, your ISP is not able to understand what website you are accessing. Then ISP will not be able to block it. Get in mind? Now you are accessing here. Now here, 
from this particular IP address, from US IP address, it is allowed in US because internet exit is now US, not India. So from US, you are able to access PUBG. Now you are playing PUBG given any block website, which are blocked in India and which are allowed in any country, you can connect to the country VPN and you can access it. Some websites are not even uh, allowed in USA, right? So when you use the VPN uh, client, right? You have multiple location options, USA, UK, Canada, Australia, which VPN you want to use? Yes or no? Fastest VPN. Some location, they have multiple VPN server, load balance, fastest. Some countries, they have only one VPN server, slowest VPN, right? So which country you want to, for example, some sites are, for example, Canada website are not allowed to access outside of Canada. You want to access those website? So now from India, you connect to the Canada VPN. Yes or no? Now your IP will not go to the website. Your Canada VPN server will go to the website and Canada IPs are allowed. So you can access the website, which are not authorized to access, which are blocked for India, but still you can access using the VPN. Because in the VPN, your IP is not going to the internet. VPN service provider IP is going to the internet. Sometimes attacker also misuse it. They use the VPN, behind VPN, right? And they, so that is the reason. Uh, you know, in cybersecurity, it's very difficult, right? Physical theft, physical thieves, you can catch lost the FIR, right? But in cyber attack, it's very difficult. That's the reason we believe in prevention, not on cure, prevention cure, but not detecting the not thieves. Why? Because, because here in the physical crime happen, uh, you have full control because the country is yours, country is ours. But when we such cyber crimes happen, they are happening from different, different countries and these countries are not going to help. For example, you see some company has been attacked from this particular IP address. If this particular IP address belongs to VPN, 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 come, uh, VPN device will record which IP address has been connected and use this particular IP at the same time, but they're not going to help. They are not going to help. Get in mind? They are not going to help. They're not going to share any information. You understand? Even the government also knows they are not helping. You understand, right? There are many terrorists. We also have evidence. Yes or no? It's still many years some court case and something is happening, is still they are not handing over to India, right? There are many criminals, there are many uh, money diggers went out of the country. We have all the evidence, right? So other companies are not helping. If those people are still in India, you understand, right? Because we have full control here. I said cyber attacks are initiated in different, different countries. Same company, same attacker, rarely you will see. Same country. Other countries attacker will, will target this region. Very difficult. Right? So we can hide, hide unity behind the VPN and these companies. That's the reason Indian government told last year that all these service providers should know their customer and should give the information. If they want to run their business in India, they have to know the customer and they should share the customer, people information to the government if required. Then only you can run your business here. Otherwise, you go out of the India. We do not need you. Yes or no? Because people are misusing some website TikTok blocked, some website blocked, right? Still you are using in this website. Some of the websites are very, you know, intelligent in the sense. They used to change the domain. For instance, SimExpert has been blocked. SimExpert 1, SimExpert 2, SimExpert 3, SimExpert.org now instead of... Means they, you understand, right? Some outside website, you don't have control here. It's, it does not fall under government compliance, right? So if you block the website, they will again come with a different domain, little different. Simexpert1.com, Simexpert2.com. Because it has been blocked domain here. They will come with a different domain. People will search and the name will come with a different domain. They can still access those websites. Right? Because we don't have control. Yes or no? People are still accessing. There are multiple ways they are doing. Again, they are coming with a different way. Right? So that's the reason. Blocking something which belongs to different companies is sometimes difficult. Some reputed company will not change the domain, but some other company will check the domain and, and come in India with different domain, right? So you understand that is how people are accessing some blog website using the VPN. And sometimes you, you can use the same with your proxy also. That is why some people are confused. Some people are thinking the proxy and VPN both are same thing because they used to access blog website through proxy also and through VPN also. Yes or no? Because in both the cases, Either VPN proxy, your IP is not going to the internet. Using VPN proxy IP is going to the internet, right? Once you connect, for example, 
once you install the proxy here, configure proxy, whatever you access, it will it will go. So destination will be your proxy IP, not the Facebook IP address. Proxy IP. So proxy IP is allowed on the VPN uh, in, in your ISP, right? And then after that, your USA IP will go to the internet. That's the reason using proxy IP also, you're able to actually develop your site and using VPN also, but concepts are entirely different. But people, home user understand proxy and VPN both are same thing. But both concept and technology both are entirely different. But blog website, of course, you can use it. You can access it. Get mind? So, so attacker is also... behind... Ah, yes. Attacker is behind VPN, then we cannot uh, identify. Actually, oh, of course. That is the reason, right? Behind the VPN, then you have to contact the VPN service provider. Yeah, which IP address from where and attacker has tool intelligent. They will not even prevent proxy or they will not use their own IP. They will use some infected system, some compromised computers. Right? So cyber attacks are very difficult to identify who has attacked it. Sometimes they'll take their, their uh, responsibility their own. Sometimes we will not be able to find, but on the Twitter or somewhere they will uh, take the responsibility their own. That yes, we have done so the cyber attack. We can this particular we block the company. We may block the incorrect IP. <laughs> of course, it may happen. It may happen. We block the incorrect IP. But again, uh, those IP do not belong to our company, right? We do not have business. So if you block that IP, also does not harm. Uh, can proxy uh, can proxy hide my IP? Yes, of course, it will hide your IP because your IP is not directly going to the internet. Proxy IP is going to the internet, not your IP when you are behind the proxy. You are not giving interview yourself. Your friend is giving. Yes or no? So, of course, IP will be hidden behind the proxy. That is the reason you can access, uh, you know, the internet uh, and your IP will not go to the internet. Proxy IP will go to the internet, right? So, uh, attackers are very religious. Many of the times they will use different IP addresses, different systems and uh, collecting the information. Very Only only biggest case, high, high level case, some investigation will happen. Like, Four, three to four years back, one of the powerful man, uh, the uh, president of America, Donald Trump, he tweeted, he did not tweet, but one tweet from his uh, Twitter handle that today you transfer one Bitcoin to my account. Tomorrow I will transfer two Bitcoins. Today you transfer one Bitcoin to my, my crypto account. I will return to do Bitcoin tomorrow. Now you understand, one of the powerful person, President of America, if he did, he's not going to lie, right? <laughs> Many of people have transferred one Bitcoin. It was, the account has been hacked. And from many of the minister, not only him, he, but many of such ministers from uh, on his government has done the same to it. Then big investigation will happen and attacks are on jail now. So the, when there is such kind of high security incident happen, the many possibility that uh, uh, we can catch the attackers. Otherwise, very very difficult. Okay, so tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, no, no, Thursday we have off. Thursday. Ah, so uh, we'll end up today. We'll connect tomorrow at the same time. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, actually, Thank yesterday you. I Thank asked you. one question in the group chat. I think uh, you did it. Sorry, sir. Uh, sir like, you uh, have, sir. What's your name? Rishu. What question you had? Uh, sir, like in the coming lab session. Uh, like, ah, so you have to check the lab. So you did not check the syllabus. You have to check the syllabus. No, like I'm just asking, like, uh, do we deploy the tool on some server? It's already deployed. It's not a deployment level of training. Connector will deploy, integration of devices will deploy, but uh, not the full deployment. Okay, so can we get those ideas like uh, from where to study those? Like uh, mostly interviews ask for the deployment. Like I am anyway, mostly no, no. There are separate people, people who are working in operation. They do not deployment is one time work. Okay. Only implementation is separate team who does the implementation. Device integration, connector installation, deployment, forward deployment. We'll cover it here, but not the sim deployment. But deployment is done by the implementation team. So you should be specific. You should not see the most people are asking for deployment. But deployment, L1, L2 will do the deployment, no. People, administrator and above. Administrator also do not do the deployment. Implementation team, because deployment of the sim is one-time task. 
any company get your point so, so where can we study that part of that we have separate training for deployment splunk administration and enterprise uh, administration and architect on which we cover planning deployment configuration troubleshooting solutioning everything okay, okay. that is next level of job without operations you cannot become the solution architect or you cannot implement it see implement is simple in solution right but the concept behind that comes with the operations if you are the part of operations already then only you can learn implementation because implementation yeah. is not just installing the tool installation can anybody can do it right like other software installation but concept behind that scenario with which are various scenarios which are coming in which you can only understand if you are already having experience of operations that mind so coming with the implementation directly joining implementation training directly means jumping directly skipping jumping in the last step actually sir that. like i am in uh, i and d access management uh, in like uh, domain so they are like i am in operations part but uh, in most of the interviews they are asking how you are deploying that ping fed red tool so that's why i am correlating uh, here uh, but here it is not okay it is not sir sir uh, your soc and list training is not covered any kind of sim admin Uh, it's, it's the administrator, it's the administrator and analyst training. Major many of the part will cover admin also, like writing the core list and rules, uh, use cases, report, dashboard, integration of data source, imprint, onboarding, integration of devices, installing connector. Means majority of the admin part will be covered. Only installation of the ESM will not be covered here. So L three level kind of expectations. L one, L two, and many of the L three actions will not fully L three, right? many of the l3 level also because that should have you should have some experience of operations and this training is very it will become 5 6 month right and will not yeah, be i'm already for everyone yeah i'm already uh, working sir then you can go with splunk uh, administration and and architect training people who are already going in soc operations having experience of installing uh, or device integration and other stuff writing core lesson rules they can go for the advanced admin training that is uh, implementation level So that is the right one. And that for that anybody way. who will go for implementation, they must have Linux experience, Linux knowledge at least, basic Linux knowledge, because all the security tools will be deployed in the Linux only. So not as administrator, sir. Uh, so as a senior SOC analyst, I should have some knowledge about the SAM also, right? The, that that can be teaching. Ah, that will be covered software. here. You can have a look on the syllabus. That will be covered here. Up to five, six years experience, people are doing right. That level will cover it. L one, L two, majority of L three activities also. Get it, man? Okay. So all the use cases, cases. The same training, use cases creation, so, all will be covered. Okay. Data source onboarding, device onboarding, right? That we call as integration, connector installation, troubleshooting. When any device is not forwarding the logs, that all are admin activities. Yes, sir. Sir, can you just you. send syllabus on our group? You can download from our website. Uh, which group? Which group? You are from free group or you are the regular group? In a regular group. So you can download from a website, right? And you should download before joining training itself. You should have a look at this levels. Sir, so we can bet when it is going to come in, sir. We can bet will happen on September, September mid. One so I need to contact. So I need to contact the number which is in your website. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will okay. give the information on the last day. That means day after tomorrow, right? Will be the last day of our free class. So I'll be showing the sim that we have deployment, what kind of deployment we have, configures and everything, and uh, I'll be giving the information if anybody is want to continue this batch or or weekend batch. Okay, so ah yes, uh, fine. You suggest only weekend batch for uh, working professionals, right, sir? Not suggesting. It's all about timing only because both the yeah. same batch. weekend, weekday, same duration, same training, no change, right? It's all about your timing. If your time per permit weekdays, you can join weekdays eight to ten. Time does not permit only weekend. You have time. You can join weekend batch. I believe you are still here. That means you have time in weekdays. No, sir. I am working in CSTRs. Oh, okay. Thank you. You have time, right? In the week in morning. Yes, yeah, CSTRs. Working in CSTRs. Ah, so the weekdays is good. Regular continue. Uh, you have continuity. Okay. Sir. Okay. So at the end of the day, we'll connect tomorrow at the same time. Thank you. Uh, now Thursday, Thursday will take off. Tomorrow is Wednesday, right? Thursday is Raksha Bandhan, so Thursday will take off. Instead of that, we'll cover on Friday. We'll cover it one day, okay? Thank sir. you. Thank you, sir. Sir, sir, one of my question. Ah, 
Ah, yes, go ahead. Sir, please suggest me some site so I can uh, search as, uh, some technical words which you are uh, taught me and taught in class. See, you should not see now in the internet world, no need to follow a single resource, right? Sir. What you can do is whatever word, whatever I explain, right? Just Google it, go on the YouTube, just Google it. You check it out. Which resource you are understanding good in better language. You can learn okay. from there. There is no only separate single book because see, in single resource, something may be good and something may not be good, right? So you search okay, in Google, right. what are the best resource you can go, you can go through it. No problem. Okay, sir. Sir, any uh, reading terms, and understanding. Any sir, terms, reading and understanding of the logs is start, sir. Any, ha, will be understanding. And the regular blacks, firewall, how we understand firewall logs, what all fields it generate, right? Proxy, email gateway, antivirus, what logs it generate, we'll understand the logs, how to read. Hello, sir, this yeah. side around. Hello, sir. Uh, one moment, one moment. Huh? I was telling that uh, any terms and terminology that I'm using sometime here, if you're not aware, right, you should... Once training is finished, you should do the Google and learn what is the use of that term, what is the term technology that you did not understand. If you're not oh, asking, sir. that's fine, but you should read it. Make sure that you understand and you know this word now. That is yeah. how people learn. That is how people learn new things, right? Hello, sir. Yes. Hello, sir. After this training, how much experience will show in our resume? Now, this training, this is a uh, public uh, forum right now. Okay, okay. Because we are going to upload uh, the video on YouTube. Okay, okay. okay no issue. Sir. Okay. Yes, Hi, sir. This right. is Pavan. Uh, yes. Is... Sir, as of now, I'm in a free batch. If I want to join a regular batch, what's the criteria? And uh, uh, can contact? I will I will give the contact. Let's finish two more classes. I'll give okay. the contact of my counselor. You can contact to her. If sure. anybody wants and to how long will it take, sir? Total, it will take around three months. So I around uh, two weeks we already had so around two and a half month, maximum three months more, maximum. Okay. That should be good. So it's very in depth training. So we are going to have all practical stuffs. So, okay. and we will provide the videos as well, right? Videos of practicals only, not every day. Okay. Once we have this free class over, then you have to ensure that you create the notes on training. Video will not be shared. And in case any time you miss any class. So you yes. have paid for me prior to the class that missed it. Okay. So in that yeah, case, I'll give you temporary the access. So only for okay. particular person. Don't send free uh, free class notes. I have already shared right in the group. Yeah, but uh, Atex and malware is not there. That is there. Uh, I mean, that is there on the YouTube, right? Uh, same. So, uh, oh, I mean, uh, malware. Now, is it part of free batch or is it part of regular batch? Uh, now it's free batch. No, no, that the document is that's the only document is being shared in the free batch. Malware, phishing, and all the so many documents being shared on the regular batch. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, guys, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow. I have one question, sir. Sir, Solop, sir.